Hey, it's Matt, your average gamer, and this is day 10 of a build a day until DLC is announced. That's right, we're gonna be doing a build every day until DLC is announced. We're gonna see how far we can go with this, how many builds we can create, and how much versatility we can do with Elden Ring. For this one, we will be covering Moonvale, a really fun weapon to use as a mage, and also very good on its own. We're on New Game Plus 7 here, Journey 15 currently. Tested the damage here at Gatefront a bit, and it did pretty well. And we're going to take on some early game bosses and a couple of different things to show you a really good build with this that you can even use on the later journeys. Now, a lot of people ask if the damage tappers off a little bit as you go into new game plus cycles, and yes, that is one of the problems that Moonvale has. Even so, it can do posture damage with the R2 in the weapon special, and it also can do a little bit of damage with the beam and whatnot, and we're able to come up with a good build for it at 150 that we're able to buff as well a little bit and get some decent damage from it while also doing some posture damage if you stay close to whatever you're fighting. By the way, I wanted to mention too, if you're not subbed, definitely sub to this channel if you want to see a build every single day until DLC is announced. We're going to see how far we can go with this, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So definitely hit that subscribe button. First, you're asking, where do you get Moonville? I know everybody probably already knows this, but why not fight this magma worm with it and show you where you get it? You get it in Gale Tunnel. I'm going to show the map at the end here. You have to face one of the easiest magma worms in the entire game, although if you do face him early, it may be a little bit challenging because he mainly has the first move set. I think he only has the first magma worm move set, which basically is just wiggling around and leaving pools of lava that can be kind of annoying but again he doesn't have a ton of hp compared to the other ones i think he's one of the earlier games scaling wise the magmorm here is not too tough and there it is in gale tunnel be aware by the way that when you're in gale tunnel you have to get the second grace if you're coming from Kalid because otherwise you will be trapped you won't be able to travel out however the boss is not mandatory you just need to get that other grace and you can come out the other side of the tunnel and once you kill that Magmorum, he will drop Moonvale for you, which you can get extremely early in Elden Ring. Now, Transient Moonlight is the skill on the weapon, and that gives you two options. Once you put your sword in its holster, you can either use, I'm um, on Xbox for me, it would be RB for the light attack, and then RT for the heavier attack. I prefer the heavier attack because it seems to do more posture damage and getting posture breaks in Elden Ring is far and few between now. So having a weapon that can get those posture breaks is a big bonus. But the other one's actually really good for mob control, has a wider range, seems to hit a little bit better at a distance for me in certain circumstances. So they both have their uses, but I do prefer the charged attack on bosses for what seems to be a little bit of an increase in posture damage. And again, posture damage is far and few between now since recent patches. So it is really fun being able to posture break enemies with that charged attack and being able to, I think it does around 30 something posture damage per attack on the charge one. So that's not really bad at all. So keep that in mind is a little bit of a bonus for Moonvale is the fact that you're getting like 30 posture damage on that charged attack. Given the fact though that you have to hit it with the physical part though so do remember that you do have to hit it with the physical part of it in order to get that posture damage i'm not sure the beam does posture damage on its own you're going to want to be close anyway because if you combine the physical part along with the beam on hit and you're able to do that you'll get the posture damage and the damage from the physical and magic beam which amounts to pretty decent damage even on new game plus seven or max scaling and it is a very, very convenient weapon to use, too. The weapon art is very easy to place, very easy to get used to, too, and extremely user-friendly. Speaking of that, out of all the weapons that I cover, this has to be one of the most easy weapons to use. That's what I mean by user-friendly. It's very simple to use and understand how it works. It's also very easy to land, and you're able in certain situations to keep your distance if you want to just go for the beam. And if you want to play it close and get risky, it doesn't have an extremely long animation like certain weapon arts. It's nothing that you're really going to get stuck in. So you're going to have a lot of flexibility in how you go about bosses, how you fight bosses, is an Elden Ring, and this is definitely one of the ones where it's just easy to understand, it's easy to use, and it functions pretty much as it says. You know, it's one of those things where it's like, 
right on the package, it kind of tells you what it is. This is one of those things where it's simple. The directions are quite simple here. You have basically two moves, and as far as using them, it's very easy to get used to a Moonvale build. So if you're new and you're looking for a Dex and Intelligence build, Moonvale is a fantastic place to start, especially on base new game, where the damage is even better. Now for buffs, we're drinking our tier, which has the magic tier in it to help us with the beam. You can use the consecutive attack tier as well if you're hitting with the sword itself. I'm going to show in talismans in a little bit to go over that. And then we're going to be using Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength. Now obviously for this, it really, really works well against NPC invaders. We know how good it is in PvP. I don't think I needed to show this. I know my skills aren't always the best. But yeah, this is pretty ridiculous. It is very powerful in terms of NPC invaders and in PvP and whatnot because the beam is really good. It can be buffed a lot. It can do a ton of damage in PvP and to NPC invaders. And it comes out very fast, very quick, and it's very hard for them to dodge, which gives you a big advantage in the fight. For this setup, we have Moonvale plus 10, we have Any Seal Will Do, we have the Jar On in a random set, Shard of Alexander, Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords Talisman to generically boost both the beam and the physical damage, and then Dragon Crest, and if you want to go for 50 dex and 50 intelligence on this build, I'm going to show stats in a second, you can use Melissa's Prosthesis as well, and we have the Magic Tier and the Faith Tier for buffs. Now, if you're going to keep leveling up in PvE, then I suggest getting high intelligence so you can use a lot of damage from the beam. But for this, I went for a split build to get both in that physical and the beam damage. So I went for 50, 50, and 50. If you used Melissa's Prosthesis, we'd be at 50 Dexterity, 50 Intelligence, and 50 Vigor. I like the stats where they're at at 150. It gives us a really good range on everything, and I really liked how the stats came out at 150. I felt like they were pretty good. And since we're doing early game bosses here, because I kind of have to split things up now that I'm doing a build a day and whatnot but even so keep in mind that everything has a ton of hp because this new game plus seven scaling and we're still doing really good damage and moonvale is still a really fun weapon to use and you can use it in the late game but it is easier with summons and stuff and there is a little bit of a damage trade-off with some of the end game bosses especially on the later journeys so for PvE, I'd have to put this somewhere in the mid-range. For PvP, it's obviously like S-tier because it's still used a lot in PvP and for good reason. For me personally, I have been able to dodge it in PvP. I haven't done a lot of PvP lately. Over the summer, though, I did a ton. I was able to dodge it sometimes, but I did get one shot by it a few times as well. I know a lot of people complain about it in PvP, but it is very good and it can be dodged it's not as bad at least in my opinion as the rivers of blood was back in the day when it had that ridiculous range and could proc two or three bleed procs in like a matter of seconds even so though very powerful for pvp is the point for pve i'm going to put it in the mid range say it's around a b it can really do you a lot of a lot of good early on but as far as some of the late game bosses it kind of has a little bit of a trade-off there I hope you guys enjoyed day 10 of a build a day until they announce DLC. By the way, if you have any recommendations for builds, put them in the comment below. I have a list that I'm getting to gradually to keep the quality up and to keep this thing going. If you're not sub, definitely sub to this channel if you love overpowered PvE builds. There's a ton of awesome builds on my channel. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll catch you guys there.